What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guests today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, great hey to see you. Hi, guys. So it is, I'm super excited about today's guest because she is a multi-talented musician that added some flavor to a very traditional instrument. So uh, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Oh, Chief, we are so excited to have this one-of-a-kind artist join us today. She's a violinist, songwriter, and dancer. Her music ranges from classical to pop and rock to electronic dance. Her 2021 Artemis U.S. tour kicks off July 3rd. Please help me welcome platinum-selling artist Lindsay Sterling to Chief Chat. Hey, what's going on? Hey, thanks for having me. Lindsay, we're excited. So thanks for joining us and everybody watching, you know what to do. Tell us where you're watching from. Uh, leave a note in the comments, share your love with Lindsay or any questions, we'll read those live. And follow us and enable your notifications so you stay in the know about our lineup. Chief Chats are every week and we have a military exclusive guest list for you all summer. Awesome, so Lit Lindsay, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you. This is exciting. And again, thank you for your service and for everyone's service that's watching. Absolutely. So can you tell our viewers where you're calling us from today? I'm calling you from Los Angeles, sunny awesome. California. So are y'all are y'all open now? Is it is the world open in, in, in California now? Barely. It's like so weird that it's, you know, I don't know, we're starting to do things. I think the mask mandate has been lifted. So it's, you know, like I was on a first set the other day where we didn't have to wear masks. <laughs> exactly. It's like the before times. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Lindsay, you are such a unique talent. Can you tell us what drew you to the violin and then what made you decide to incorporate dancing into your, um, your show? Yeah. So when I was really little, I was like five years old. Um, I begged my parents for violin lessons, and I think it's because they loved classical music, and so they would sometimes, like, they played a lot of classical music in our home, and I learned very quickly the violins were, like, the star of the orchestra. They always got the fast notes, they had all the solos, and so I just very quickly was, like, in my mind, that was a star, like, the violin, and so I begged for lessons, and, um, but I also really wanted dance lessons and so my mom took me to a dance class and she took me to a violin lesson and she was like you know they, they didn't have a lot of money they couldn't afford either let alone both and so I chose the violin out of the two and um you know but I've always loved dance so as I've you know played the violin and progressed there I didn't actually start dancing until I was 23 and that's when I was like all right I feel like I, I still love this art form. I want to try to go for it. And so that's when I started to like teach myself how to dance. And, and it was partially just because I was writing this music that was so upbeat. And I was like, I can't just stand there and play this music. This, this music needs vibes, it needs movement. So that's kind of how it all came to be. So how, I mean, how, how good a shape do you need to be in to do, to, to, to do your set? Well, not as good a shape as you probably are in, but um, I will say, especially, you know, I'm about to go out on tour again. I tell you, I am running stairs every day. I'm trying to just get my endurance up and, you know, because it's a pretty, it's a pretty, uh, ac not acrobatic, that's the wrong word. It's a very cardio heavy show, that's for sure. <laughs> Lots of jumping, kicking, spinning, dancing. And so, um, you know, I, I'm trying to get back in really great shape so I don't pass out once I get to like humid areas like Texas where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> and Lindsay, um, knowing it's tough, you know, trying to make it in the music industry, uh, what was it like for you to get started and then to maintain perseverance and resiliency? Yeah, you know, this, this industry is, it's interesting. It's an interesting beast that's always changing. And I feel like one of the things that really helped me out a lot in getting into the entertainment industry was that um, I had recently been on a mission for the, the Mormon church. And as a missionary, you get rejected a lot. You know, you go out there, you're sharing a message of, you know, I was out there sharing a message about Jesus Christ. And I was in New York City for 18 months doing oh, this, wow. you know, full time, didn't have a job, didn't do anything else. I was just sharing the good word. And 
New York can be a very upfront place. So, I mean, I got spit on, I got yelled mm. at, like, you know, I had been basically rejected for like mm. 18 months. <laughs> and so, you know, here I come back, you know, ready to go into the music business and chase my dreams. And rejection was just kind of like, okay, if you're not interested on to the next, you know, and I, I almost had been like primed to be, re you know, resilient in that way. So I really think that helped out a lot. And then it, you know, people kind of think a lot of times that once you make it, you've made it, but it's, it's, you know, the very successful people, they still get rejected all the time. They still get disappointments. They still get turned down for stuff. And it's about still getting up every time you fall down, every time you release something that maybe people hated and you just got to say, okay, on to the next, you know, uh, we're going to, that hurt, but I'm going to keep moving. And I think I'm very grateful for that big, huge lesson I got in resilience. Cause I think that's what allowed me to not only get my way in, but also to stay in this business and not let it just jade me and destroy me yeah. and my confidence. Yeah, no, I, I can imagine New York city is like a gauntlet. Like if you, if you can make it through New York city, trying to do anything, you pretty much got it, got it made. <laughs> right. Yeah. But like we talked about, you know, uh, for the past 15 months, it's been a whole different world, right? And it's just kind of easing up the pandemic a little bit. And, uh, you know, people are, I've been able to see people's faces for, like, I've been meeting people with face masks on and it's hard to remember foreheads. I can tell you that it's not a, not an easy thing. But um, so you you haven't been able to tour, which that, that's a huge part of what you do. So how have you been able to connect with your fans during, during the pandemic? Yeah, you know, I have, I found some things that, you know, every, there's a silver lining to everything. And as hard as the pandemic is, has been, and, you know, ups and downs of it, like emotionally and all of that stuff, I've figured out some things that I'm like, wow, I'm going to take these into the future with me. Like kind of these plan B, C, D, like these plans that just kept going backwards. So I ended up at like plan W things I never would have planned on doing, but I'm like, wow, like Twitch streaming. I never really intended on Twitch streaming, but you know, here I was with some time and I thought this is a way that live I can connect with fans and um, I really enjoy it. I love it. It kind of creates this intimate feeling with the people that are watching. It feels like almost like a small, sh small show feel, but in a chat or in a performance, whatever it is. And so I'm like, yep, that was something that I got out of the pandemic experience that was a plan W that has now become, oh, I want to take this in with, you know, add it to my plan A's. Um, and so there's been many things out of the pandemic that have been, I think for everyone, good learning experiences, silver linings um, that I, I think definitely, but that's just one of the things. I also did a digital Christmas show that I was like, huh, I really enjoyed that. Like maybe that's something I'll do in the future. Like a, a digital, my own Christmas special. Like a lot of times you think, oh, if I want a Christmas special, I got to get ABC to buy ABC, it. Or I got to yeah, get, yeah. you know, I got to get the big dogs to accept me. And then it's like, wait, no, I don't. I can do this myself and just stream it myself and put it out there. Like, you know, I don't know. It just kind of gave everybody, I think, a fresh perspective of new ways to do things that we never thought of. Yeah. And I think it's also kind of, like you said, social media, it, because when you're on the go, you kind of just use social media for, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here eating this or I'm taking a picture of that. But then now when you're forced to like, that's all you have is social media. Now you can see all the different ways that you can capitalize on. So that, that was awesome. Absolutely. And now things are starting to get back to normal. Let's talk about your upcoming Artemis US tour. How excited are you to get back on the road and be in front of your fans again? Oh, I am. I'm so excited. There's going to be like this very emotional feeling stepping onto a stage again. I'm like an emotional person in general. Like my tears are always right here. <laughs> so I just know I'm going to like, I, I even get emotional thinking about it. Like I'm going to get so emotional when I step on that stage and get to like, there's something about looking into the eyes of people that are watching. And it's like, I've worked you know, on this music and the show and I've worked so hard to get this craft ready. And then to be able to have a moment with someone when you're sharing it, you can look in their eyes and see like, you know, there's always someone in the front row that you can tell is just so glad they bought their ticket, you know? And mm. <laughs> there's nothing like that connecting moment of like, we're experiencing this together. I'm sharing, you're accepting it and you're sharing with me and I'm accepting it. It's such a humanizing moment for me where to be honest, I don't think I ever feel so clearly the 
value of individual people and how special each one of them is as when I'm performing for them. I look out and I see everybody as if they are so beautiful and so amazing, like regardless of whatever differences we all have. And it's, I try to like capture that and remind myself of that when I'm in line at the grocery store, like, you know, or on the, on the road, whatever, that people are people. And like so many times we kind of just glaze over that and people just become like out there, objects, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But that's probably the most humanizing way I see people as special, amazing, incredible, so much potential is when I'm looking into their eyes on stage for some reason. It's very like magical to me. And I, I saw on your IG that you had, uh, when, I think on your first concert, you were backstage and you heard like everybody chanting your name or something like that. Like, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't even imagine what that moment mm -hmm. probably felt like, you know, being, being pretty new to the music industry and then hearing that kind of reception. Yes, that was that's a moment I'll never forget because I remember it was my first show. When we put the tickets on sale, I was terrified that no one would buy a ticket. I was like, I might just be there playing to like two people. Who knows? And that would be my, my sisters, you know? <laughs> um, so I was just like, because at that point I had done performances, but they were like wedding gigs or, you know, be, no one was there to see Lindsey Sterling. I was just like off to the side playing. They were there for the event or the wedding or, and so I just didn't know if anyone would come. And also I didn't expect them to know any of my music or anything about me. Um, I'd never experienced a fan interaction before. And so when I heard them chanting my name, I was absolutely shocked just that they would know my name and that they would care to chant it. It was just the weirdest, like in that video you see on my face, it was like excitement, yeah. then terror, then like yeah, exactly. confusion. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And Lindsay, uh, your current single, Lose You Now, is very emotional. What inspired the lyrics? And then what do you hope that listeners will take away from that? You know, the lyrics of that song were inspired by my own experiences with loss. Um, I lost my best friend and my dad to cancer within a year of each other. And, mm, um, sorry. you know, I felt like that just took so much of who I was when I lost them. And I wrote a whole album about it. It was called Brave Enough. And I wrote it while I was grieving, like intense grieving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a very specific feel to that whole album of like heavy loss. And then years later, now recently, I wrote Lose You Now. And it has such a different feeling than the all the songs on Brave Enough that were like, I can get through this. I'm brave enough to continue. I can. This was a much more like hopeful, take on loss where and it's where i'm at now where it's like of course i still like miss them i think about them all the time sometimes i it's hard to remember that they're even gone you know like i'm like have to remind myself sometimes like when i go to call my dad that he's not here anymore you know even though it's been like years however i see it so much now of like i can look back at my memories of them and it's not like this dagger to the heart pain it's oh my gosh I love them so much and I like it brings me joy to think of those memories instead of pain and it's like I've gotten to a place where I have come back like the full circle Lindsay has come back um my heart is fuller because of the things I've lost and because of the fact that I had them in my life and I'm I'm able to see that now clearly and I believe they're my guardian angels now and that they're with me and they guide me and so it's a song about I guess my experience and learning that loss like that we will come back from loss any mm -hmm. any loss in life like you always think that this has changed me forever and i'll never be the same i'll never be happy again i'll never now i know that i i am happy again and that they are my guardian angels and so lose you now is about we lose things we lose people we lose you know opportunities but they can still always be a part of us that's what it's about yeah and that's it that's gonna that's gonna help so many people in life in general. So, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for putting that out there in the world. Because, uh, like I said, you just just talking to you for the past you know fifteen minutes, I can tell you have a wonderful spirit. So, thank you for sharing that energy with the world. Thank you. <laughs> and but, Lindsay, as oh, no, sorry, go ahead. Chief. You got you got to leave. As you know, we have soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, Guardians, Coast Guard members, and military families watching from all over the world. Do you have any words that you'd like to share with our heroes today? Oh, man, that's such a 
that's such a big topic to talk about, you know, or like to, to share. I, I feel like inadequate to share because I don't personally have, you know, any family members in the military. But um, my grandfather is was a veteran. He's now passed away. Uh, but I just know that, you know, war was something. I remember trying to, you know, interview him for, um, you know, like a school project where you get extra credit if you interview a, you know, a veteran. And I remember it was something that was such a, you know, he didn't really want to talk about it. And, and I know that it can be such a hard experience. Um, so much so that, you know, my grandpa would always just be like, oh, he'd sugarcoat it and just tell me like, he never talked about the war actually. Um, and I've like found out through documentaries, you know, I found out some of the things he did. And um, so I just want to say thank you so much for the sacrifice that you make for, you know, yourself, you know, the life that you have left behind and for your families, for the fact that I'm sure they miss you so much. So I just want to say like, um, you know, thank you for sacrificing to keep everyone at home safe and to, you know, to like freedom's not free. And um, sorry, I'm, like I told you, I'm a very oh, listen, person, I feel this is, this I'm an artist, what can I say? But, yeah, um, you know, freedom's amazing. not free, and I'm very grateful to the country I live in. I've traveled all over the world, and um, and I am very grateful for the United States. Man, that's awesome. Awesome, man. I'm, I'm with you. I feel the same way. And I and uh, like I said, uh, I, my, my tear duct count is a little low, but... Uh, but <laughs> you have some but, of mine. I'm coming Yeah, 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 but, but I appreciate you. Uh, so you've done a lot of covers and collaborated with a ton of artists, right? So... Is there anything that kind of sticks out in your mind or, or, or super memorable or? Oh, I love, I love collaborating. Um, I just think it's so fun to work with so many different people. Everybody works so differently too. So it's interesting when you write with one person, it's going to be completely different from your experience writing with another person or working. And I would say one of the most unique ones I've ever done was with the Muppets. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, I was so excited. They picked, um, the Muppets, I think, were starting their YouTube channel. And so they picked like three YouTubers that they wanted to collaborate with. And I was one of them. And I just awesome. remember, um, I also went to film school, something that a lot of people don't know about me. And so I'm like, a like, I love, you know, the behind the scenes of script writing and what goes into that. I love hearing how directors do things like I, that's so fascinating to me. And, you know, it's something I studied in depth was storytelling. And I got to sit with the Muppets writing team. And Chris, there was a little script at the beginning of it and we made a narrative through the music video. And I remember like I presented my idea and they were like, okay, we like it. They're like, it's a good idea. Um, but Miss Piggy would never do that. She wouldn't say it that way. And they're like, and Kermit, like he, he would do this. And they just started to riff off each other. And I felt like I was just a fly on the wall, like smiling, a smiling fly um, as I watched them talk about these characters that were real to them and I got to watch the way they write and they were just like all spitballing at each other and be like well that's funny no that's good you know and suddenly they had this story that fit all that, that Miss Piggy would do and you know these people or these characters were so real to them and it was so fun to then be on set with them and work with the characters and watch them go from like people to Miss Piggy you know um and it was just such a joyous experience. And I was actually in the hospital the day before and I made the hospital release me because I knew that if I didn't get out, like I had salmonella poisoning so bad. Gosh, man. I got your it heart. And, um, I came back from Asia and came home and with salmonella poisoning. And anyways, I was like, you have to release me because I'm working with the Muppets tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like barely standing on set, but anyways, it's, it was a really special experience and I'm glad I got out of the hospital. Well, well, Lee and Julie, we, we need to get the Muppets on the show. I, I, that, that's yes, not, we, we need to work need on that. To, we, that's a really good idea. Um, <laughs> yes, and I really right. like what you said, Lindsay. Like Miss Piggy would never say that. That's that cracks me up. That's really funny. <laughs> oh, she had they they brought in her Louis Vuitton shoes. Like she has like all this designer <laughs> stuff made custom for her by the actual designers. She had like coach bags, and they were like showing me all her stuff. Like. <laughs> Oh, but wow. has nicer stuff than I do. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah, for sure. She's better dressed than any of us. Oh, man. So who would you like to work with in the future? Is there anybody you would just love to collaborate with? You know, um, interestingly enough, I have always loved John Williams so much. I don't think he's even 
I don't think he writes music anymore, but I'm like, if I could have like one dreamless collaboration, it would be John Williams. And for anyone who's not sure who that is, he's a composer for movie soundtracks and he's done the most iconic movie scores of all time from Jaws to Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, like you name it, he's done all those themes that you can just sing in your head. And I think that like I had his best of album when I was like, you know, 13. And it was one of my favorite albums, you know, strange teenager. Yeah, super cool in school. Um, but, uh, you know, I, so I think that he's the best musical storyteller there is. And that's what I love to do is tell stories through music and instrumental music mostly. So that's what would be my favorite. Excellent. And then tell us about your time on America's Got Talent and then more recently Dancing with the Stars. So what were those experiences like? Yes. Very, very different experiences, both reality TV show, both competition based, um, such different experiences. Um, you know, America's Got Talent, I will say I those shows are tough um, because uh, they're hard for me to even watch sometimes because I'm just like, oh, these poor contestants, like they put the contestants through a lot. It's an emotional roller coaster for these people that aren't professionals you know that don't know how to like i had no idea how the industry worked i like i was just literally thinking that that experience was the thing that was going to change my life and you know they kind of grill that into your head and you know they keep you up late at night and they wake you up early in the morning for super early call times like so you are put into a situation where you are extra dramatic you know <laughs> like that's how like, they, they draw this drama out of people by like you know, anyways, it's a very, you know, ah, it was, it was crazy experience. And I remember after I got off the show, I was so like, it was such a humiliating experience in the end for me, I was kicked off the show. I got X'd and like the judges critique really hurt my feelings, my tender feelings. And I just remember thinking, I can't do this. Like, this is too hard. I was too embarrassed. And I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I, I don't want to be a part of that. And, you know, but then there's that gut feeling inside you that, and like I look at it for sure as like God, you know, inspiration from God. Um, but whether you, it's your internal voice or God or whatever, the universe, we all know that there's that thing that will let us know when something is right and when it's wrong for you or for, you know. And I just remember that voice kept being like, you're not done. Like you're, this isn't the end of your journey here. Like keep going. Um, and I have, that's not always the answer I've gotten. Sometimes it's been like, this journey should be done. And other times it's like, no. And so I'm grateful that I trusted that because um, it was an experience that almost just turned me away from the industry forever. And thankfully, it, thankfully I got back up off the ground and mm. kept going. Um, oh, Dancing with the Stars was an absolute joy. Loved it. Like so much fun. Um, I'd always wanted to learn to dance. And I, you know, suddenly for three months, I got to work six hours a day with, you know, the best, like one of the best ballroom coaches in the world. And to get that training and, you know, to learn to ballroom dance and to wear the most amazing costumes. Um, you know, I, I always joke that it was one of the hardest and one of the most fun things I've ever done. It was absolutely exhausting. Um, but I, I, I cried when it was over because I was like <laughs> so sad that I'd never get to put on my ballroom shoes in that way again. You know, I was never going to step on a ballroom stage to compete. Like, so I was really sad, but also I was like so relieved that it was over because I was so tired. <laughs> uh, so this would be your first time touring since, uh, since your album Artemis was released. So uh, tell us the story behind the album. Ooh, uh, the story of the album is was really fun. I was trying to think of a way to freshen it up again because this was my fifth studio album. And I was like, okay, you know, you don't want to just regurgitate the same thing and you have to find where do I draw inspiration from every time. And this time I, you know, started with this concept of the moon. I really liked kind of that story I told earlier about how loss had, you know, made me feel like it was a new version of me. Um, and I was really kind of had started to accept it, like, all right, this is the new me. She's slightly depressed all the time. And she's, you know, <laughs> like doesn't feel happiness as deeply. And it was because I was experiencing loss. And then I felt myself come back. And it was right about this time that I was starting to write Artemis is like, oh my gosh, I'm back the full vibrant version of Lindsay. And I realized I learned something really interesting and it's, it's kind of changed the way I see mental health. And it, for me, it's like the moon. The moon is sometimes bright and it's full and that's its fullest, that's its true state when it's all glorious and it's a bit, you see the whole moon. 
but then sometimes it gets covered by shadow. And for me, that's like when we get covered by loss and grief or depression or like a hard season of life, whatever it may be. Um, and that doesn't mean that the rest of the moon isn't still there. It's just covered for this time and it will come back. And so that's how I like to view any mental health thing anymore. So that's how the album started. I was like, I wanted the artwork to be about the moon. Then I realized that Artemis is the goddess of the moon in Greek mythology. And I learned more about her character and what she represents. And I loved it. She was so feminine and strong. And before I knew it, I had this whole story I'd made up about her. And so I decided I'm going to write a comic book that goes with the album. So the album is the music track kind of yeah. to the comic book I just finished it finally I didn't realize it would take me two years to write the comic book but <laughs> still the characters inspired the story and the story inspired the music and um you know I'm really really proud of the comic book I'm proud of this album and now I can't wait to go out on tour like literally with the whole package of everything the whole story the show and the music Good stuff, good stuff. So we just wanna pause for one second and share some of the comments. There's lots of Lindsey Sterling fans out there on our page right now. Jamie, Robert, Jamie Roberts, I'm glad you mentioned mental health. She says, yay. She is also an amazing mental health advocate. She did an amazing job on the Escape the Fate single. Oh. And she, Jamie's watching from New York City. Um, oh, New York. Her favorite song is Invincible. Alicia says, hi, Lindsay. I'm such a fan. I love putting your albums on shuffle and just let my imagination run wild. Jerry says, I absolutely adore Lindsay. Her shows are the best and that's in all caps. Oh, thank you, Jerry. Thank you all of you guys for your comments. <laughs> and Terry says, love your music watching from Germany. So we have lots of people tuning in from all over. Um, Blake is watching from Kansas City. Uh, oh, nice. We start our tour in Kansas City. Hopefully I'll see you there. And like, I can't believe it, like two weeks. Yep, you're right on the doorstep of getting I back know. out there. So Lindsay, before we say goodbye, can you remind our viewers where can they go to follow you online and learn more about those upcoming tour dates? Yeah, you can go to my website to see the tour dates, lindsaysterling.com, pretty self-explanatory. And then come <laughs> visit me on my YouTube channel. That's where I feel like I get to express myself the best is through my music videos. And, you know, that's where I get to do all my storytelling. And anyways, so that's, that's a good place to come visit me. If you have no idea who I am and you're like, who is this girl? What the heck is she talking about? Go visit my YouTube channel. <laughs> We have a link uh, to her YouTube channel. It's pinned in the comments and you can go check out her new single there too. You're right, Leah. Absolutely. So Lindsay, we, we know you're a busy, busy woman <laughs> but we appreciate you uh, spending a little time with us today. Uh, it, I can tell you that, you know, just from this 30 minutes of conversation, man, you you got a great personality. You got a lot of good energy, man. And you, you're projecting a lot of greatness to the world. So I appreciate what you're doing. I know. You thank us military members for what we do, but thank you for, for you know, for, for voicing, being our voice musically, you, if, if you know what I mean, because uh, it's a lot of military members that are dealing with mental health and depression and uh, all types of different issues that you kind of touch on in your music. And so we, we, we appreciate you for creating that outlet for us as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you, Leah, Julie, and Kevin for your guys' really insightful thoughts and questions. And I just appreciate your time and for what you do for so many people. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before, well, since, since you got to run, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want you to have my uh, own military personal, personal military coin. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever got a, a military coin before. Oh, I know those are really special. Yeah, yeah, we give them to yes. folks for uh, outstanding uh, service or or any type of outstanding work that they do. Uh, really, you're gonna give one to me? It. Yes, I'm gonna give one to you. So I'll get with your, your your folks after the live interview and make sure we get that to you. Oh my gosh, thank you, Kevin. That's so, so kind. Cause I, I know those are so special and you know, that really means a lot to me. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. So thank you so much. and. Uh, uh, we wish you all the best on your upcoming tour and the album and everything else. And uh, we appreciate you for, for sh uh, showing our folks some love. So uh, with that being said, Chief Chat out. Thanks, Lindsay. Right. Good Bye, luck, Lindsay. Chief Chat out. <laughs> Bye.